Hello, listeners. Welcome back to another episode of the Talking Para podcast. We've had a, a week off, but we're back with episode 12. We've got Adam Martin. We've got Hayden from the Entertain House. We've got Maddie Tate from Tate Sports Cards and myself, Troy, from the Paracade podcast. In this episode, we're going to chat about the Canberra game that seemed a long time ago now, a couple of weeks ago before the bye weekend. We're going to talk about the game, upcoming para game against the Bulldogs. Uh, but you can see a couple of us in origin jerseys, a few of us in origin jerseys. So we're going to talk a bit about origin, a big game tomorrow night, game one of State of Origin. So let's get into it. Over to you, Adam. Yeah, wonderful, Troy. Thanks. I uh, yeah, see two blokes in State of Origin jerseys and one bloke in other <laughs> shit, but that's a whole other story. Then we've got Matt Rock in the Parramatta gear because he's still proud of that victory over Canberra. But, look, let's start with that. But first of all, Troy, you, know, you say you're in the para cave. What's going on there? You don't look like you're in a para cave at the moment. No, no, mate. I've just uh, taken a break from the uh, the para cave at the moment. Uh, a bit cold in these winter times, so caves are cold. So I'm in the studio tonight. So Rock and one of the new Mark Hughes Foundation beanies, if I might add, as well. That's right, out now, uh, available both in men's and women's and kids, available at IGA, selected IGAs and Lowe's stores throughout Australia. So yeah, get wonderful. one today. Duck to Lowe's and get two of them tomorrow. But let's go. So let's start with the Parramatta game against Canberra, 28-20 victory. Look, as I said to you boys, I actually didn't see much of this game due to a uh, incident involving a helicopter <laughs> football, but it's a whole other story for a whole other day. I've catch the highlights. By all reports from everyone I've spoken to about this game, was probably one of our best performances for years defensively in that second half. Apparently, just kept turning Canberra away. Um, obviously, in the highlights package, I haven't seen a lot of that. But um, look, it's seen the impressive performances once again by Dylan Brown standing out, um, getting himself a couple of meat pies. And well, let's just go to it now. We want to go to it now. The bold predictions. It's, the bold it, predictions. It, it, it deserves a wrap. Like, I'm going to get it up. I'm going to have it in front of me because. I don't want to get it wrong, but Troy Warner, mate, that was brilliant almost. We had a score of 28-20. <laughs> Troy's predicted 28-14 to Parramatta, obviously. So he's only six points off their one team. Now the Parramatta score. Troy's first try scorer was Will Penasini, who scored the first try for Parramatta. So, look, you get half a point for that. We'll yeah, give you yeah. 0.75 of a point because we don't really have to stipulate our first try scorer. And then he's gone with his bowl prediction, which is the cleanest one of the year, besides <laughs> my double sim being the week before, but didn't get the players right. Bailey Simonson to score a double. So let's all give a clap for Troy. There you go. Congratulations, Troy. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make you a double up, Troy. If you can predict the first try scorer later for Origin and the first try scorer for the Parramatta game on the weekend, we'll pitch in and get your carton. I think that's a fair deal, isn't it? If you can double it up. Actually, if anyone can do that, the other three pitch in and buy a carton. Are we all happy with that bet? Yeah. Well, there's, uh, that's a that, they're going to be real bold predictions. Those ones, aren't they? Real bold predictions. Put us on the put us on the spot there. Jeez. Yeah, ten, but, uh, ten, ten, ten by ten. It's a hundred dollar multi from <laughs> ten bucks. So it'd be a nice green if anyone can get it. But gamble responsibly. Hayden, you won't get a mate because you'll pick a clean zone. No fucking chance. All right, <coughs> back to the Parramatta game. Parramatta twenty eight twenty. Um, we'll go to you, Troy. You can run us through this game if you want to. Yeah, well, I mean, um, Canberra were up for this game, and as we all know, Parramatta don't have the greatest of records down in Canberra. Um, we won last year, I think it was, uh, first time in nine, ten years or something like that, some ridiculous figure. But, um, so, yeah, 15 years. Uh, there you go. So, um, yeah, Canberra were up for this game, but uh, sort of uh, the week before against Manly had a bit of a semi final feel. Probably not the semi-final intensity, but the quality was sort of sort of there. Um, but yeah, what a game from Dylan Brown! He just really stepped up, made breaks, um, tackles, um, scored two tries, um, and uh, yeah, he, he really stepped up uh, in that game. And and Bailey Simonson as well scored a double against his old club, so <coughs> they were the main try scorers. And um, yeah, got away with the win. 28-20, so good all-round performance from the whole team, I think. Yeah, good for Dylan. We, we kind of, I won't say we went off him, but I certainly gave him a bit of stick the two games before. I thought he went back to running the football a bit too much again. Um, and what I saw, he seemed to find that balance and 
once again, was the best player on our field, I believe. He got three Dalian points, if I'm correct. Surely. Yeah. Yeah. Surely yeah. Right? And he yeah, got the right. fans' uh, fans' vote as well as player of the match yeah, as well. The, the world's coldest interview by the look of it as well. Matt, we're going yeah. to get your thoughts on the game. Yeah, it was good. Um, I think the second half, the boys, I've never seen them defensively like that in a long time, which is a good sign. They didn't let her try and, um, but yeah, like they really stood up, kept turning them away. They were getting repeat set after repeat set. Uh, we turn it over, they get a penalty. It was, it was crazy to watch. It was great effort. Dylan again. Um, I like the little sweet play dummy by Nathan Brown to put lane through the gap. So it was a nice little difference rather than just keep passing it out the back every time and getting the getting red from it. So you, you mean it was different to Nathan Brown getting tackled on fourth tackle with the ball? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, no, but just like they usually just keep running that play and go out the back. This time he actually Played short to a running forward and, yeah, Dylan was there to back up, playing on one leg. I don't know how he made it through that game with that <laughs> ankle, but, um, yeah, it was good team performance, probably one of the best, and I think we'll just slowly build from that now. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Queenslander up there, mate, what do you what do you got to say about the game? Yeah, I think it was a great game of footy. It was a bit of back and forth seesawing game. I think we did a really good job to win that second half. I don't know if you know a little stat for you boys that Canberra actually haven't scored a try in the second half in their last seven games. So I kind of did expect that defence to kind of be there. They cracked that with the Roosters over the weekend, but for our game, um, that streak continued. Bailey Simonson, fantastic up against his old club, really stepped up on the wing and We'll touch on it later, but it's probably the reason he's still um, remaining in the side. Um, but I'll tell you what, Dylan Brown, I think it was the best game of his career. I think I said it against, it might have been Melbourne earlier in the year, but I think this was his his career best game, really hitting um, some great form and really impressed with the bench for the game as well to, to come on in that second half. So, yeah, it was a very good victory and really good to get the, the win coming into the bye week. I think that's probably the third or fourth time I've just said Dylan Brown's best game of his career. So look, it shows the year he's having if he keeps having those kind of games, don't they? And he's kind of set that benchmark now to continue that. So um, look, like I said, saw a limited time in the game, but um, I want to give rap to Bailey. Um, I think we had him drop the week before. His performance against, defensively, his performance against Manly was nothing short of atrocious. Um, and obviously that issue would have been addressed and there's no doubt about that because we thought he was lucky to be in the team. Um, as you said, we'll touch on it later. But obviously with Sivo coming back this week, he's he's kept his spot. So it shows how good a performance he did have against Canberra. But look, yeah, what, what I did say, I said Dylan Brown was just excellent, deserved those three points and see himself that benchmark. He's got to continue. So um, look, any key moments in the game anyone wants to discuss? Not a key moment, but I just want to add, and it's not a worry as such, I guess it's going to happen with players, but I think, I think our middles, whether it be Reed or whether it be our own props, probably need to put in a better performance this week. I think against Canberra, I still got the win, was good, but I feel like we let players like Joseph Tarpane get way too many metres and give Canberra opportunities. So we way too many offloads as well. Yeah, the Raiders were way really offloading in that first half and Tarpane, uh, one of the best players in the field. And Look, there's always going to be other players on the field, but I, I think the middle needs to be more, um, as we mentioned, Bailey's defence, and most of the team's defence was great, but I don't know what you boys think, but Tarpane was uh, meter-eating all night. Yeah, it probably wasn't, a, probably, probably wasn't a key moment, but just the fact that Kimber scored the first try and were able to come back from that um, deficit early on. I think Kimber scored the first try in their games for the last... Six games, I think it is. Um, but yeah, just to, they came from behind after scoring, Canberra scoring that try um, shows that they obviously didn't give up. It was early on in the game, so obviously they didn't give up, but um, you always want to lead the game from the front anyway. I think we scored the next set. We had the ball, didn't we? It was pretty, mm, pretty much. Yeah. And then we, yeah, we scored the next two tries in the game anyway. So yeah. yeah. Look, and they got one soft. try from a mistake. Yeah. Well, there's was two soft tries, really. There was a try from the yeah. from Gutho that very rare, but the, obviously the other try there as well, scooting a dummy half, was 
was under 10 stuff, to be honest. It wasn't NRL standard. Yeah. But we, won the, we won the game, um, put a good fight in the second half and defended our line. But you mentioned to Hayden Tarpany, 234 metres off 20 runs. Um, obviously, monster through that middle as well. Um, for our boys, Paul, I ran for 153 off 16 runs. And Reggie, I ran for 116, actually, which is quite surprising. But I think... The impact of Nathan Brown off the bench, I think that's – I've said it before. I said it before it actually happened. I think that's where his career is at at that age. 30 minutes, 10 runs, 112 metres is pretty pretty impressive. So, um, And it's Kafusi not used again by the look of it. So Yeah, no. Didn't get on the field. He ran 16. So odd choice. But shows where we're at with our forwards at the moment, doesn't it? All right. No more key moments. Everyone's happy. No more bets. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. We'll go Origin next, will we? Yeah, going well, well, that's the next 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 game up. When's that game, Troy? Let me know tomorrow night, Wednesday. Tomorrow night. I'll be there. We'll be at the bank game Hotel. one, of course. Stadium, eight o'clock. Is anyone going? No, <laughs> yeah, no, it's too cold. I'm not going. <laughs> We're doing not doing two trips to Sydney in four Mate, days. They're doing those two for one specials, they can't fucking sell out the venue. You yeah. know what? But it's interesting we mentioned that. I've been meaning to touch on this for a while. I think all crowds across all sports it's still down because. People, I know a lot of people may have forgotten about this thing called COVID because everyone's all of a sudden got the flu now and no one's testing anymore. But I think crowds like, did anyone see the AFL game, Melbourne AFL. versus Sydney? It was a yeah. top six game and there was, what was there, about 20,000 there. With, you know, Sydney, the Swans can usually pull 25, 26,000 easily in Melbourne because of South Melbourne. Yeah. This shows how much crowds are there. Now, Melbourne fans, it's believed they all want to go to the snow every time this season rolls around, so they all go north, but... It, um, it just shows crowds there, and I think that's the problem here with the uh, origin as well. But look, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it out there. Not to mention the price of the tickets issue. The price is... of tickets is ridiculous. That's why they're doing the two for one. But yeah, I got asked to go on a bus down with free alcohol ticket bus for 110 dollars, and I was <laughs> like, I just don't want to. It's Wednesday night, <laughs> so it's, I'm getting too old for that. It's too cold, too old. And to be honest. I can't stand watching the game because I don't want the Parramatta players to get injured. So <laughs> I prefer that. I prefer that. You can get picked. I love Origin when there's no Parramatta players playing. That's what on night, what night is the best night to play Origin then? Well, why why are we doing in round two of Origin, game two? There's no games on that weekend. Why the hell do you still have it on a Sunday night? You may as well have it on a Wednesday night. What's the difference between Wednesday night's easier than Sunday? There's only two days to recover to finish the week. You have it on a Sunday, you've got five days after staying up late on Sunday night, pissed as. So I think Saturday night. What, like, why have a weekend off? I know they play other games and stuff. If you put Origin on a Saturday night then, um, look, I don't have a problem with it Wednesday, but it's what grinds my gears is that second game. I don't care where it's at. Just play it on a Saturday night. Obviously, I'm not going to Perth anyway, but I prefer to watch it at home on a Saturday night or at the pub on a Saturday night, but especially when uh, we've got a promotion going tomorrow night with cheap drinks and origin. So anyway, look since, we'll move, since we'll you move, touched we'll on move. the crowds. Yep. I wanna I wanna just straight up chuck it in because I'm not gonna go try scorers or anything. Bold prediction for Origin is that there'll be under fifty thousand in attendance at Acor Stadium. I think it nah. fits about nah, sixty to wrong. eighty thousand. It should wrong. be a high you'll number. I reckon you'll I'm gonna say forty one thousand. I reckon nah. there'll be Ooh. under fifty K at Origin nah. game one. I reckon there'll be 75,000 plus, to be honest, which is still uh, 20,000 more than that piss hit stadium holds up in Queensland. So no wonder it's easy to fill. It holds 25,000 less. But anyway, let's move on to the game. Enough shit talk. We'll bag out Hayden tomorrow, next week, and every other time. Um, tomorrow's game, 8-10, as we said, at Acor Stadium. The boys will be familiar with that. We play there for the first time this year, which seems weird to say the amount of times we used to play there uh, on Monday. But... Um, New South Wales, obviously the favourites going this game, understandably, got a much better team and a much better team culture. Um, we'll run through the team quickly. Um, Teddy at fullback. Daniel Tupo on the wing. No way to car. Brian Toho. Stags and White in the centres. It's believed that Crichton will start in the centres. White to the bench. Lou Iron Cleary. We needed more Penrith players in the starting team. Um, Yo, Sims, questionable. Cam Murray, Payne Haas, Cook, Paulo. Bench of Crichton, Martin, RCG and Maddo. So, First of all, obviously, good to see the three Parramatta boys there. Um, we just put a bit of criticism on our forward pack, but well, Hayden put a bit of criticism. Is that why you put criticism on our forward pack? Hang on. Let's backtrack here. Did you bag him out for the Canberra game because you knew you were about to have to talk him up in origin? No. <laughs> uh, no? 
No, all right, fair enough. But look, if you've got your two starting front rollers, I know Maddo's been everywhere, but to earn it as a bench player is even bigger. Um, in the New South Wales Senate, it shows we have forwards at the moment. Right? <coughs> Some people bagging out Maddo. I think there's jealous because he plays for Parramatta. And he's probably the bloke, FE, one of the best-looking blokes in the world, to be honest. But he um, he deserves that spot. I'm happy to see him get it. But look, it is the New South Wales Panthers as well. So um, it's hard to support a bunch of blokes you absolutely hate. But it's also hard to support Queensland when I'm born and bred in New South Wales. So, Troy, let's go to you first. Your thoughts on the game? How you see it panning out? Yeah, well, first of all, congratulations to all the debutants making their debut tomorrow night, and especially Ryan Madison. I think he's player number 300, I think, yeah. for New South Wales in origin. So uh, congratulations to him. Uh, congratulations to RCG. I think it's four or five years since he's played origin, so he's back in that arena. Uh, he's only played the one game of origin before, so it's good to see him there. Um, look, I'll do an early bowl prediction. I don't think there'll be any changes to the starting team. I think it'll stick the way it is. Um, I think White will be the centre, and I think Crichton will be on the bench. Um, but, yeah, it's obviously going to be – it's an old cliche, isn't it? It's going to be one in the forwards um, to let the backs do their, do their work. Um, I think potentially it could be, as we all know, a little bit wet on the field as well. Um, so maybe a low scoring game, uh, hopefully not. Hopefully, it's a high scoring game, a bit of entertainment, but yeah, I think New South Wales will get away with it, get away with the win. Yeah, Matt, go to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this one. I have Troy pretty much knows I don't really <laughs> get pumped for an origin game, I like watching it. I, I think. Went to my first game two years ago ever for Origin. But I'm actually excited to watch this one. I like the debutants for both teams. Um, I think there's going to be – it's not going to be the Origin that we're used to. I feel like the ball's going to get thrown around. A couple of young guys coming in with nothing to lose, making a name for themselves. Um, Slater is coach for the first time. Like Wank up. <sighs> Sorry, I feel I feel like that's he's brought in a lot of people like Cam Smith, Thurston. I've seen the training videos, and they like Slater could still be playing football. Like he's ridiculous, and just the coaching style he has, obviously with Bellamy. But yeah, I think the Blues Panthers, as I'm going to call them, but um, I feel like that side of the field that play they do every week for Panthers. They won't have kick out there, but they'll have somebody that will fill in that role. Um, and, yeah, I think that's like Tor's going to score another hat-trick for sure. Yeah. Down do, you mean, do you mean the play after they get six again on fourth tackle if they haven't scored? Yeah, it? yeah. Yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That one. Yeah. So they spread right, it well, wide. And, but, yeah, that's I think that's, that's enough, be that's enough talking about origin. We won't worry about anyone game. else's thoughts on the game. We'll move on. No, we'll come to you, Hayden. We'll go through your team first of all. <laughs> Um, Kalen Ponga, fullback, with one of the most out of form fullbacks in the NRL at the moment. But uh, Coates on the wing, Cobo, good luck. Look, I like this kid. I don't like a lot of these players, not because they're Queensland, I just generally don't like him. But kid's got to be a talent, it's good to see excitement. Valentine Holmes, don't mind that bloke as well, playing great football. Gay guy, meh, place for the Knights. Um, Munster, look, you got to respect the four Munsters in this year, to be honest. He's, um, He's playing great football. And look, Jerry Evans. I know a lot of people don't like Jerry Evans. I actually like Jerry Evans as a footballer. Um, I respect what he can do on and off the field. And I, just, I find him very well mended the way he talks. I didn't when he was younger, but now I do. Um, Cotter, who once again in the other debut on, young player killing it. Capewell, Kafusi, Josh Papalihi, Ben Hunt, and Tino. Just call him Tino. I'm not saying his last name. Uh, bench of Grant, Collins, Carrigan, and Nene. I'm going to start off and say I think the Reed Mahoney was very hard done by. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't think Grant's playing that good of football, to be honest. Um, and that's proven by the fact they picked a half <laughs> hooker. I know some people say that Ben Honey is a better hooker than he is a halfback, but look, I don't think he's playing bad football for St. George, playing great football, but I feel like Reed was in a lot better form than both those blokes, and he's pretty much been screwed over. But look, he's got an idea now what it'll be like being at the Bulldogs next year, so... Let's go to you, Hayden. We'll get your unbiased thoughts on the game. 
I I disagree and agree with you about the Reid Marnie one. I think he should be 18th man, in my opinion, instead of Tom Dearden. I think Ben Hunt's a good option at hooker, and I think Harry Grant has been in some form um, over at the Melbourne Storm. So I, I kind of agree and disagree. I think Reid Marnie hasn't been in as good form, in my opinion, as he was in previous seasons when he was kind of getting picked. Um, as for the team, though, plenty of deb- debutants, Selwyn Cobbo, I actually think he's going to get exposed. I don't reckon he'll score a try. I think he's going to get exposed in this game. A little bit worried about that one. Um, but pl- plenty of new faces on the bench. I really like to see it. Um, I've had my tip out for this game for about two days now. I'm actually going to tip New South Wales by six. I think, like Troy said, it's going to be a fairly low-scoring game. I'm going to go with 18-12. But, look, I'm going to throw some some bold predictions in here. I kind of agree with Troy. Yeah, that the Blues starting lineup will remain the same. Now, if Nathan Cleary, which is probably the clear favourite to get man of the match, doesn't, I think Jack Whiten will shut some of the haters up and get a, a man of the match. So Jack Whiten, is, for mine, is a smoky for man of the match. I'm backing Jerome Luai to score the first try. I reckon Tarek Sims might cross over at any time. And as for the Maroons, I'll go with uh, Dane Gagai and... Tell you what, I reckon Harry Grant will score one off the bench. But you mentioned earlier, just before I, I wrap it up, you mentioned earlier Valentine Holmes' form. I'm actually going to back Val Holmes as the man of the series. That's not a bad shout, actually. He's playing some good football. So um, he was playing rubbish football after he came back last year, but he's absolutely killed. I think he's finally found his position in the centres. So I know he wanted to be a fullback. He was definitely too good for the wing. Wing is just hanging out with footballers, but. Um, yeah, being in the centres obviously is perfect. So, um, one more thing for you, Hayden. How many of the Queensland players are actually born in Queensland? Do you know? Don't know off the top of my head. There's a few, uh, uh, few. Where was Josh Lee born? Taylor Ponga was born in WA. Ruben Cotter, there's one. Where's he? He was born there. He looks like a Queenslander, that bloke. He looks like he was. Oh. Shout out to our Queensland listeners. Born, born, born <laughs> in, oh, I don't care. Born and bred on Forex, that bloke. So he looks hard, hard as hard as they come, doesn't he? I'll tell you anyway, what, I'm loving the Forex. I tried it at Magic Round. I had it the other night yeah. as well. Good drink. I used, to drink, I used to drink Forex, actually, until uh, Great Northern come out. So. So are we all going to do score predictions and bowl predictions? We're going to get there. Hayden's gone for that. Okay. Matt's going to write them down. We're going to do score predictions, okay. we're going to do bowl predictions, and we're going to do first try scorer. First score. try scorer. Okay. Yep. I'll go first. I think it's going to be 34 to 14 to New South Wales. My first try scorer is Junior Paulo. <laughs> no, I'm going, don't know that now. I'm joking. Bowl prediction too. Oh, there's a carton on the line. There's a carton. My bowl prediction is Junior Paulo to score a try. There you go. I'll back you, Junior, but I'm not backing your first try scorer. Because, look, you've mentioned it. I think that Penrith connection is going to be too strong for Queensland, so I'm going to have to go Toho first try scorer. Saying that, if Crichton starts, I'll probably back Crichton because he's won me a lot of money over the years. All right, go to you, Hayden. Yeah, I'm going to go with a scoreline of 18-12 to the Blues. Unfortunately, I just think Queensland uh, in in Sydney will get beat. Uh, first try scorer, Jerome <laughs> Luai. Um, and bold prediction, I'm going to say that there'll be under 50,000 in attendance. Oh, he's coming for the crowd prediction still. <laughs> is there a cyclone coming tomorrow that you know about that we don't know about? <laughs> well, those is going to be fun. All right. Troy, you're up. Okay. Score prediction 20 to 14. And um, bold prediction will be, ah, uh, look. Uh, Ryan Madison to score a try on debut, and uh, we'll be doing Man of the Match, is it? Oh, oh we forgot about Man of the try. Match, actually. Mm. Nah. We'll, we'll oh, we'll first try. First, first try. try. Um, I'll go Katoni Staggs. It's interesting. What we might do is we'll come back before we get to you, Matt. We'll go on Man of the Series instead of a Man of the Match. I think that's – I like I like the Hayden said that one. Valentine Holmes is a good shout, but my Man of the Series – in great form, is going to be Isaiah Yo. Troy, we know Hayden's, obviously Valentine Hayden's. Troy, we'll go to your man of the um, series. I'll go Nathan Cleary. Yeah, it's safe bet. Safe bet. Just like <laughs> yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I've had an independent player. They're all going to be there for each other. They'll be clapping and jumping on each other, and you know what it's like. Matt, 
What do you got for us? I'm going to go 40 to 12. Ooh. I'm going to say it's going to be massive New South Wales. I'm going to go, I think, Tupu. Tupo. First try. Yeah. We'll be off a kick by any chance. Yeah. Cross, yeah, Nathan, okay. yeah Nathan's, the old Nathan Cleary cross bomb. Um, bold prediction. Ooh, bold prediction. I think I might go RCG to score a try. Mm. I'll tell yeah. you what. I chucked in a bold prediction before the crowd, but I won't stick by it because I think Toto could get <laughs> oh, He's backing down already. Oh, he's back. <laughs> if, if, if you want bold prediction for the actual game as such, not the crowd, I'm going to say that no winger scores a try. Ooh, that is a Ooh. good one, actually. Yeah. Are we sticking with that one? Do you want me to change it? Yeah, because I think they've already sold 65,000 plus tickets. <laughs> there you go. Let's, there you go. Let's change it. Let's I, see people, I see people every day on Facebook this week going, anyone got a spare origin ticket? So. <laughs> Man, they're, giving, they're giving away on the radio even up here, which shows they are desperate to get some and yeah. they're giving away every day. So, I And worry. also, listeners, stay tuned to the end of the podcast. We'll have an exclusive chat with uh, Super Trainer Hayden Knowles live in Origin Camp. Uh, talking about the three para boys, RCG, Junior, and Ryan Madison, about their contribution so far. So stay tuned to the end of this podcast and uh, hear the chat with Hayden. Wonderful. All right, let's move on from Origin. And... Can I do my man of the series? Or oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm Sorry. gonna go like I'm gonna go a massive one here. I'm gonna go say Payne Haas. Payne Haas. That is massive. Okay. Yeah, he is massive. You sure he won't want to play for New South Wales after the first game? Or no? All right, better not say that. His family know me. All right, um, <laughs> moving on. Parramatta game. Look, we're pretty lucky, aren't we? Five day turnaround into a game on Monday at the same grounds, no travel. So you would expect, obviously, touch wood, no injuries. That's why I hate Origin. All three of our boys to back up. Um, we'll go through the team because I can see some changes um, based on Origin. <laughs> And I can see Ray chucking a bit of spinner in the works there. And he's he's done it really by putting the Papali here at lock again. Um, Madison on the bench. He's got Reg and Paul though starting. You might finally get your wish, Troy. You might finally get that impact off the bench because I, I think one of them will start on the bench. I can see what I can see happening is Nathan Brown starting at lock. Um, Papali here going to the front row and starting. That's pretty pretty simple. We won't All prediction, much. is it, Adam? It's not bold. I can just do a bit of common sense, really. Like, you're not going to start. It doesn't make sense to start two front rowers that play in Origin. You know, yeah. like the Sting won't be like the Bulldogs. I've got no doubt the Bulldogs will turn up against us. They always seem to. It always seems to be a physical game. But going from an Origin game in front of a crowd of seventy-five thousand plus, Aiden, um, with the Sting and you know the, the game's got a bit of aggression. To going a game where you're playing the team coming last. It's just not going to be there for him. So you need someone who hasn't had that experience of origin that week to be there starting. And Papua is a bloke that always kind of does it. So look, I'd probably, I'd probably put Reg back to the bench to start Paulo and then bring him on for each other. With, <laughs> it just depends on game time, but... It does come in on game time as well, 100%. So if Paulo gets from here, just start Reg. Yeah, 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 exactly right. Um, but we'll go through the team. We'll pretty much just cover off the forward pack. Paulo, Reg, Mahoney, uh, Murata in the second row with... Cocaine Lane. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Sean Lane. Puppley at <laughs> lock. It sticks. It sticks to you. <laughs> and Moses at the halves, obviously, with Dylan Brown. Dylan Brown seen in a moon boot. It's a bit of a rest Shout out to league. Sean Lane. <laughs> Shout out to Sean Lane. I assume he's not listening. <laughs> no, no, he's. I just, I just tell him. Matto is okay. listening. Yeah, he did it. He did it. No, we didn't do it. He did it. All right. He earned that nickname. Precautionary, yeah. precautionary moon boot for yeah. Dylan Brown. Yeah, look, yeah. First one, I didn't call Dylan Brown Portaloo Dylan. So, look, we'll go on. Um, the back line there of Gutho at fullback, Simonson one wing, Blake back in the centres with Opacek dropping out of the team, Will Penasini, and obviously the return there of Sivo after what was apparently an incredible performance in reserve grade this week. So, oh, yeah. uh, the bench of Makatoa, Maddo, Fusi, and Nathan Brown. <laughs> Um, 18th man was Opacek, I believe. So, obviously, there's more players there, name on the extended squad that we probably won't see play. 
Uh, Russell in 23, though, so obviously getting close as well, pending Bailey's form, I would say. It's been a bit up and down, obviously. Um, look, like I said earlier, I feel like the Bulldogs recently, they've just always turned up for us. They've always given us an aggressive game. Um, you think back to the last couple of years since COVID, they've, they've been probably the best defensive games against the Bulldogs, you would see it. They're kind of mind you, I wasn't born, but those early 80, those late 80s, 80s games, not early 90s games, and it was all about the defence and some good try-saving tackles. And um, it's actually different football, but good entertaining football to watch. I can see a similar game. I can see us running away with it in the second half, though. Uh, it's not my bold prediction. I can see it going in pretty close to half time, and us putting about 20 or 30 of them running away with it. But um, obviously, Sivo back would like to see him go try, but. Much all I've got about the game, to be honest. We'll kind of see where the game pans out on Monday, but I'll be there in attendance. I'm assuming the rest of you will be as well, most likely. Yes. Yep. Yep. No, nah, mate. We'll mate be out there. Not going? I won't be. He'll be, he'll be there. He'll be there. I'll try. I'll be. I've got a free ticket for you if you turn up. So um, there you go. He'll be there. <laughs> He's there now. He's like, oh, free ticket. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, we'll go to you first, Matt. Your thoughts on the game? Yeah, it's going to be a. A good one. I feel like, yeah, as you said, I think we haven't ran away with a dogs game in a while. I think a couple of years ago when Fergo first come that land for the field intercept. But yeah, it's a it's a strange one to predict because they played so well the last two weeks I've watched the dogs and Parrot have that tendency against the dogs to maybe take it a bit easy and clock off a bit. But with Sivo back, I feel like they're just going to attack down that wing. He had a massive performance. Most of these boys are still fresh because they actually played for New South Wales Cup the other night. So they dropped back and to keep that match fitness and not take the week off. They trained all week. Um, but yeah, Sivo, massive. I think it was like 290 running metres. And that carry out of... I feel like the carries out of our own half is going to be a lot better with him in the side. We won't get I'll ask him how we're talking about that. Yeah. It's been something we've been pretty critical. Like he, he tries to take the run to our own end, but obviously he couldn't do what Fergo did. It's one thing doing it in a New South Wales Cup level. Yeah. I was worried about Sivo coming back, and I know Troy was as well because we said it could take a month. Just with the confidence, do you think he can make those run metres in an NRL game against yeah. last place, may I add? Yeah, I think, I think I think that's why they've brought him back this week because it's against yeah. the Bulldogs. Is that your bold against... prediction then? Are you going to go was... Sivo to run over 200? No. No? <laughs> I've, no he's gonna got go. my, he's gonna... I've got my bold prediction. Oh, it's ready. He's got it ready. Yeah. I've written it all down. Don't you yeah. worry. No, my bold um, prediction, Matt, is that Matt's going to tip the Bulldogs to score 12. You always <laughs> seen the opposition to score 12. <laughs> all right. Anything else, Matt? Moving on from uh, No, I'm just, I'm just excited to hopefully we be 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 ruthless. I hopefully uh, we actually get ruthless in this game and put a big score on. Yeah. All right, Hayden. Oh, he's not doing his prediction now. No, no, we'll come we'll back. We always come back to that. Yeah, yeah. Sebo being back. Um, I, I thought it would be against that Canberra game. I was gonna remember I had that. Bold prediction ready of Sevo to score a double. Um, you know, win over Canberra. He's been fantastic at New South Wales Club. A little bit worried about Wonga Blake in the centres. I think he's been fantastic on the wing, but I do think Bailey's spot is um look, I think he was a good fullback at Canberra, but you wouldn't put him over Gutherson. So I think Bailey's got that spot on the wing for a reason. I've got a weird feeling, boys. This isn't a bold prediction, but not that he'll get injured, but I think. I think Ryan Madison won't back up. I just have a weird feeling that there's a few players, Mitch Rain, Bryce Cartwright, one of those two will probably come in the side. Um, we'll wait and see if everyone does come up. Because the thing is, we've got that that a bit of a turnaround, which is really good advantage for us. But uh, Matt touched on it, the Bulldogs, they've been in some pretty good form. Um, they played a great game against the Dragons and Josh Addo Carr. He wants his origin jersey back. We saw that against the Panthers last week. So... Yeah, it's going to be a tight tussle, I think. Yeah, you. so uh, you wake up. Um, <laughs> just, just, just check out a, a fun fact there. Go on. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, no, nah, look, I uh, agree with a few things that Hayden said there. Um, the Bulldogs, they've 
sort of turned a little bit of a corner <laughs> in terms of scoring points. These days at the start of the year, they couldn't score any. These days they seem to be clicking over a few points. So um, as you touched on, Adam, they, they are old 80s rivals, Parramatta and Canterbury, um, the old dogs of war against the electric eels. So um, it's always good when a Parramatta plays the Bulldogs. Um, I think interesting that Sivo's back. Um, he has been killing it in New South Wales Cup. So he's obviously shown that he does deserve his spot. Um, again, sort of agree with Hayden. I think maybe Wonga Blake possibly should be on the wing. Um, I think he's played his best football this year on the wing. Um but then you have to accommodate Bailey Simonson as well. So potentially Bailey's on a bit of a, you know, playing for his spot. He's got a couple of other wingers chasing him down and um, potentially even Wonga Blake going back on the wing as well. So, um, look, it's going to be tough. I think another good advantage, as we said, is that it's, uh, what, Thursday, Friday, it's a, it's a five-day turnaround from Origin. Um, it's a, what, two-week turnaround from the last time we played. So um, Dylan should be potentially over that little ankle injury uh, or niggle. Is it um, synesmosis? Is it, they like using that synesmosis word. Nah, I think if it, I think if it was that, he'd be out for like three, four weeks, I think. But Yeah, yeah you can get, you can get uh, very, very mild synesmosis. It's, just, it's an ankle sprain. I'll sprain have to, yeah, ankle. I might have to hit up the... Um, NRL physio about that NRL one. Physio. And, and, that's and, the see what he says. But yeah, no, looking forward to a game. Uh, Queen's birthday Monday. So I'm hoping that this is an opportunity for Parramatta to get that uh, uh, three wins in a row and also put a lot of points on um, the opposition and get that for and against back up as well. So yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, look, like I touched on, the Bulldogs have turned up for us. I've, I've got the scores up. We beat them 8 2 in 2020. Um, 2019, they beat us 12 6. I remember that game, the first game time we played in the stadium. Um, and in 2020, we beat them 18 16 as well. But the last two times we played them last year, we won 32 10, 36 to 10. But that comes to my prediction. I'm just going to rattle off my prediction straight away, my bold prediction that I feel like it'll be a close game at half time. I feel like they will lead at half time. That's my bold prediction. I'm just doing this in reverse for some reason. But I'm gonna I'm gonna add on to it. They'll lead at half time. Parramatta win by 19 plus. Yep. All right. And my first try scorer, even though I've got them leading at half time, is Gutho. I was gonna go Gutho hat trick as bold, but I went bolder. And <laughs> my score line is 38 to 10 to Parramatta. I'm sorry, I'm having I'm having to score 30 unanswered points in the second half. There we go. Who wants the next crack? Who's going to be bold? Yep. Go, Matty. You've got it written down. Uh, mate. Me, I've got it written down. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Into this moment. Huh? You're no, prepared. So I, I'm a bit worried about Guffo with these these Burton bombs. If you saw Burton against Panthers, yeah, that, good point. Me, that was ridiculous. So I'm a, I know Guffo's been in practice. <laughs> we all saw it on social media. So hopefully, fingers crossed. But I got eels, fifty-two. Ooh. What have I got? Dog Satan. Eel. <laughs> twelve. Twelve. Fifty. Fifty-two to twelve. I thought I'd. Who cares? I'd stick with. But if you if you were Hayden, you would say, oh, "I reckon it's going to be a close one." I've got a Paramount of fifty-two twelve. <laughs> 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 with Mitch scoring thirty points. Mitch um, scoring thirty points. Uh, Is that no, your prediction? Got, no. Oh, okay. Plus 15 points. <laughs> I've got Sivo first try scorer. Yep. And my bold prediction, it's going to be a funny one. Reed Marnie to score the last try to crack the 50 and kiss the para logo in front of the Dogs fans. Oh, <laughs> that would be a moment. That would be a very controversial moment. Hayden, go to you. I uh, I like you. I wanted to back Sevo first try scorer, but look realistically, I can't see Wonga Blake passing that ball in the centres if he gets it. <laughs> so I'm going to go a pass from Will off to Bailey. Bailey first Duffer. try scorer. I'm going to go with 
Parramatta to win by 14. Um, 28 points to 14. I know we've got to get the, the for and against up. I, I don't think we get that 40-50, unfortunately. Um, look, a bold prediction that's not too bold. I might actually get one for once. I'm going to back. So we're sitting, what, fifth on the ladder. And the, the current teams, obviously, this including the Panthers, uh, the Storm and the Cowboys. And I'm going to say that the Mighty Eels score more points than both of those teams. So the Eels to score more points this weekend than both the Cowboys and the Storm. Right. Right. Corey, what do you got for us? Okay. School prediction, I'll go 38 to 6. Um, I think maybe the... The Panthers game for the Bulldogs last week might have taken a lot of out, out of them. So, um, I mean, when they played the New South Wales Cup Panthers, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. Um, because yeah. they were up for a win that game, but uh, yeah, I don't think they got the points in them this weekend, so I think they'll go back to their old ways. So, 38 to 6, first try scorer. Um, I'm going to stick with him, Will, Will Penasini. Um, I think they always seem to go out to one of those edges. Um, early on in the game, whether it's a left, whether it's a right, anyone's guess. So I'll stick with Will. Um, bold prediction, yeah, probably not quite as along Maddie's path, but, yeah, Reed to score a double. <laughs> so um, sort of along Maddie's path, just not kissing the emblem, but I'm tipping that right. he will kiss. Oh, if he scores a double, he'll kiss it on that second one. Don't worry about that. I'd love to see it. I, I'm like you've got. I think even excited. on the first try, you'll score. Uh, kiss oh, him any try he scores, he'll do it. I am pretty excited. Yeah. I'm going to lose my shit if Reed kisses the emblem right there, and then I'll be heartbroken when I realise he's still going. All right, that's all we got for this week. My that is he? final fight. No, it's not. We got more, but we're talking about the game. My final prediction is: look, get out there on Monday, public holiday. Hopefully a cracking day. Hopefully not too cold because we're sick of this cold weather. Seems weird we're not complaining about the rain anymore. You might get 21,000 then, Hayden, at a cool stadium. Yeah, the my prediction out of that 21,000, I reckon there'll be 24, 25 there is. There'll be a lot more Parramatta fans and dog fans there. Um, we've seen it before. We've played them. We've seen them when we played the Tigers there. We know how to turn up. Um, I have looked at ticket sales, but I guarantee you there'll be more Parramatta fans there. Yeah, well, so we've been our home game for a couple of years, so... Yeah, that's it. Talking about the game, uh, Troy's got that exclusive there for us with Hayden Knowles joining us live, and we'll catch you next week. Go, Power. Go, Blues. Go, Blues.